Hi everybody and welcome again to Woodpecker's Deep Dive. I'm Jeff Ferris. My normal sidekick Jay Mauter is on a special assignment, so he's not with us today. I'm flying solo. Today we're going to talk about Woodpecker's Coping Sled, a tool designed to make in-grain cutting on your router table safer, faster, more effective. Now, before we get started, I'd like you to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll always know when we've posted a new video. All right, let's jump in. And the first thing we're gonna do is turn this big pile of parts into this beautiful coping sled. Let me give you a little tip about anything that you open from Woodpeckers. When you look in the box and you find the hardware, you're gonna find it's in a whole bunch of bags. Now, each one of those bags is for a specific step. So if you take them out, make sure that you keep them in groups. It'll make the whole process go a lot simpler. Now the first step is to get the base plate ready for the fence. So there are five flathead wood screws and five track nuts. And we're just gonna barely get those started. Now we're gonna slide the track onto the base. Now we've got a special tool to make sure that we get this lined up square. These polished steel pins are gonna slide right through these two holes, and then we're gonna hold the fence against that as we lock it down. So with the fence against the registration pins, we're gonna slide it down until it's flush with the edge of the base, and then we're gonna lock the screws down. So if you've done the job correctly, the pins will have the same amount of drag on both sides. So if they've done their job, you're through with those now. One of the really cool features about the coping sled is that your stock is trapped between the fence and the top plate. That keeps everything stable. The next step in assembly is to put in the two bolts that affix the top plate. So the top plate is held on by two knobs that are gonna to attach to these bolts. I'm gonna slide the bolt through, it's a flathead, so that it doesn't interfere on the back side. And then we're just gonna spin on the washer and a nut with a built-in star washer. We do that twice. The two tracks that hold the guide and the clamps uh, are mounted above the surface of the base. And so these little risers right here are the next thing to go on. I've already threaded them through. They're on flathead bolts, just like everything else, with the track nuts at the top. So the next step is to install the top plate. Now, this is one where you can't do it wrong. It only goes on one way. When you get that in there, we're gonna put a nylon washer on first then a couple of large fender washers, and our two knobs. Now, be sure you do that step before you install the top tracks because you cannot put the top plate on once the top tracks are installed. Let me give you a little trick that's not in the instruction manual. So, we want our top tracks square to the base this way. All right, the problem is the fasteners are underneath. So I discovered that if I slide one of those off the edge of the table and bring a square to the back edge, I can get my alignment right there. And then I can come in from the underneath and tighten the screw. Now, once you get one started, the rest of it's easy. Just stand it up on end. Now the other side's gonna be perfectly squared up too. And we can go ahead and tighten all four of those bolts. Now we're ready to install the clamp beam. So we have a couple of hex head bolts. We're gonna put those in the outside slots of the top tracks. Drop the beam on. 
and then these large tapered knobs that'll be your handles when you're using the coping sled just spin right on there. The last step is to install the guide. Two shorter hex head bolts and the edge of the track. Drop on the clear plastic guide. Nylon washer. Couple knobs. And our coping sled is fully assembled and we're ready to go to work. So what makes the Woodpecker's coping sled the best option for in-grain cutting? Well, something that's not there. Notice what's not on the back of this? There's no bar. We're not riding in the T-track, the miter gauge track of your router table. Instead, we're actually guiding along the fence. See, any time on a router table, the alignment of the fence really doesn't matter. The cutter is at the exact center of the fence cut. So this doesn't matter whether you're leaning in or leaning out. It just doesn't matter unless you're using the miter gauge track. If you're using the miter gauge track, then you're, the, the track and the fence have to be parallel with each other. Any other time, if you're not using the track, it simply doesn't matter where you are. So by guiding off of the fence rather than the track, we have perfect alignment every time and a lot less hassle in the setup. Now we have one option that you can add to your coping sled and I'll show you what it can do. If you're doing deeper things like uh, maybe some entry doors uh, or possibly uh, you're doing some long tenons, you may want more cutting depth. All right, so this is the standard guide. We can take that off. And now this one, you can see has a much, much greater range of motion. So you can get some really deep tenons with that. The other thing that we did with this is we made it a bit longer. This longer guide lets you get on the outfeed side quicker and so it gives you better support. So, does two things for us, works nice with shorter fences, and gives you a much greater depth range. Another really great feature of the coping sled is the fact that your stock is captured, okay? We're gonna bring that up against our fence. Now, I'm gonna bring the top plate up against the stock and lock it. When you feed into that router bit, what it's gonna try and do is flip the board this way. So no matter how much pressure you have down on it, holding it to whatever, the, the forces are still trying to go this way, okay? Well, by capturing it with the top plate, that's the one thing it can't do. It cannot rotate at all. We're gonna put a little bit of down pressure on it at the same time. But it's not actually trying to lift it up, it's trying to spin it. Now, it can't do either one. Can't spin it, can't lift it up. We know we've got the cut under control. Last thing I wanna tell you about is the fact that while I'm showing this to you on a woodpecker's router table, the really cool thing about our coping sled is it doesn't matter. It works with everybody's router table, even a homemade router table where all you've got is one straight line fence without splits or anything fancy, just a straight wooden fence. This coping sled is gonna work. So that's enough talking, let's do some cutting. Let's do a cope and stick joint for a raised panel cabinet door. Now the first step is to set the depth of cut between the fence and the router bit. So the bearing in our cope and stick set, we want that right in line with our fence. So I'm gonna take a straight edge, put it on the bearing, and then adjust the fence until it's a perfect match. Again, I'm not paying attention to alignment because it simply does not matter. So we set that up with the fence perfectly in line with the bearing. Let me give you a little hint. It'll make your cope and stick joints come together a lot better. At this point, I'm gonna lock the micro adjuster, unlock the fence, 
and bring the fence forward just a couple thousandths of an inch. Okay, now I'm just barely going to miss the bearing and the tongue on the coping stick is not going to interfere with the bottom of the groove. Gives me a little bit of glue room and it makes sure that the joint fits perfectly tight on the outside. So now I've adjusted the depth of cut to give me the shoulder that I want. This is going to be the top of the frame here and I've got just the amount of shoulder that I want exposed from the blade. Next, we're going to set the guide to the fence. I want a piece of three quarter inch scrap. I'm going to put that against the fence, bring the base of the coping sled up against that, and while that's setting flush, I'm going to bring the guide up against the fence and lock it. Our router bit has a tendency to tear out the back side of the cut as, it's, as you're finishing. So what I'm going to do is take the same piece of scrap stock that we used to set the cut up. I'm going to put that behind my workpiece. Now we'll bring both of those flush to the fence. Make sure everything's aligned. Then we're going to bring the top plate tight up against those. Lock that and then lock it down. and we're ready for our cut. Now this is one of those don't ask me how I know this tips. When you take your board out, be sure that as you take it out, you flip it this way to put it back in. Okay, the alternative is if you take it out like this, remember, this is the inside of your door. If you flip it like this, now all of a sudden you've got one inside and one outside on the two ends. Not what you're looking for. So when you take it out to do your other end, pull it out, rotate it like this, so you're always looking at the same face. Make sure your fence is properly aligned, push everything in, make sure your backer board is nice and tight. Clamp it up, and we're ready for our last cut. Now, which you do first, the cope or the stick, is kind of like which came first, the chicken or the egg. It works either way. You can do one first or the other first. Personally, I like to do the coping cut first, and then I'm gonna use that to set up the height of my bit for the grooving cut. And I can dial that in so that my grooving cutter perfectly matches the tenon from the coping cut. Now I'm gonna match up to my bearing again. Lock it down. Now this time I'm not gonna back it off. We're gonna leave that right in line with the bearing. So our door frame is perfectly square and ready for our raised panel. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Deep Dive covering the coping sled. Be sure and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time we post a new video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Deep Dive.